Hello there. Before we get started today, I wanted to let you know that we're having a contest and giving three people the opportunity to win two free coaching sessions each. All you have to do to enter is to go on iTunes, give us a five-star review, take a picture or a screen capture, and send it to info at theoptimumhuman.com. Then you'll be entered to win not just one, but two coaching sessions with both Brian and myself. Please note we will be picking winners on July 15th, 2016. So do it today if you want a chance to win some free coaching. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Optimum Human Podcast. Today we're talking to Mike Gillespie, lifestyle and success coach. Today we discuss appreciation, health and fitness, following your passion, and living the life you've always wanted. Welcome to the Optimum Human Podcast, the show that interviews the world's top experts in fitness, nutrition, mindset, and beyond. Let's get into the show. Hey guys, welcome to another awesome and exciting episode of the Optimum Human Podcast. Today's guest is Mike Gillespie. Am I saying that right, Mike? Uh, close, Gillespie. Gillespie. All right. I knew I was, I was going to mess something up. Uh, and uh, Mike, um, just for people who are not familiar with you, you're you're from the, um, it was like Hamilton area? Am, am I like the west west of Toronto area? In, yeah, I, I lived in Hamilton. Now I live out near Niagara Falls. Oh, nice. 15 minutes from uh, Niagara, so. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and wh- what do you do just to kind of like, what's what's been your story in two minutes or less? Yeah. So... Right now, I'm a real estate investor and I'm a success coach. Um, I'm 39. I worked for the government for 13 years. I was unfulfilled and there was this lack of growth and tons of negativity there. Mm -hmm. And I started experiencing other things, other entrepreneurial things, other things that made me feel good. So a big piece of advice I give a lot of my clients is just do more of what you love and less of what you don't love. So yeah, I've been on a journey over the years, lots of personal growth, lots of ups and downs. And here I am. I quit my job two years ago and helping other people do follow a similar path. Awesome. Yeah. And like you said, there's been some ups and downs. Like what, what have, like what's been one major up and what's been one major down? Yeah. So, so, uh, a major up yep. is just a big thing is just hanging around cool people that give me energy. You know, like, like even you two, like, I mean, you're you welcome. Know, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, we've, we met a couple of years ago, um, at, you know, holistic lifestyle, uh, coaching yep. program. And, you know, we, we, we had, a, a common interest and that's, that's what I've been having the last, you know, couple of years, just really hanging with cool people that share common goals and there's just been a lot more support over the years you know people are people are more open to helping you than like i always thought they were like i've just been asking for help a lot more than uh way back in the day so that's been a a big up for me i know there's been other ups as well but just hanging around cool people and just helping them and they help me and we all grow together so it's all fun so oh. some downs for me, um, you know, there, there's been there's been some downs as well. So um, so just just to kind of like what's been like a major down and how did you kind of overcome it and what did you use to to kind of you know get yourself back on track? Because I know you're a pretty pretty um, healthy, pretty fit guy, you know, and you seem like you've got a great attitude. So uh, yeah. I kind of want to see if you've got any secrets to uh, you know. Yeah. Digging, digging your way up. Yeah. So throughout this journey of mine, you know, I, I, I talk now that I do have the support group, but early on when I realized that I didn't want to work for my employer anymore, uh, I didn't have a lot of support from people. You know, I, I worked for the government. It was one of those safe, secure jobs, high paying jobs. So me trying to explain what I was attempting to do to people wasn't easy and it wasn't well received by my wife, by my friends, by my family, by my coworkers. So I had a lot of, I felt lonely 
throughout the early part of my journey because I started to connect with some other successful people that are already currently doing what I'm doing. And I was still hanging around some of my, my old group. So I didn't really feel accepted by either. Mm. And um, it, it felt lonely in, in that space. And it was, it was not easy, if that makes sense. No, for sure. Yeah. And, and any time you make a, a huge life decision like that and, and something that's kind of off the beaten path, people will look at you like you're crazy, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, like like what what kind of made you decide to quit your job and start and be a success coach and, and, and do, do real estate? Like what was like, was there a final straw or was there just a bunch of stuff leading up to it? Um, th- there was a couple things leading up to it. So, uh, as I said, I was there for... 13 years. Uh, early on, um, when I first started there, there was actually a couple people that were investing in real estate. And they suggested a book to me. It was called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Great book. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of people have read this book and have said great things about it. So I, I gave it a read. And it really kind of opened my eyes to other things. You know, whereas before it was just, um, you get a job and you stay there for a while and you make money and you pay the bills. This showed me that there was other alternatives. So these guys were investing into real estate, some of my coworkers. So I was just like a sponge back then, you know, even learning new knowledge at my job. I was in computers, so it was interesting and challenging to me. And I enjoyed that stuff, you know, growing and things like that. Um, So I started to invest in real estate early on in my job. And then over the years, I just bought more and more. And then about halfway into working, uh, you know, probably about seven years in, I realized that I actually enjoy doing other stuff more than this job. Mm. And I kind of just put it off to the side a bit. And then it c- kept popping up, you know, more and more. And I started thinking about other things, you know, entrepreneurial stuff, businesses and helping people and, you know, buying more real estate. And I found that, you know, I was I was doing some of that work while I was at work, you know, lunch breaks you know, talking to people at work about it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I started gravitating a little bit more into that. So then, you know, things that really helped me figure out what I wanted to do more of was I took two unpaid leave of absences from my job just to start exploring. Kind of get your things. toes in the water a little bit. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So you guys, it sounds like you've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So you understand the, the quadrants you know, left quadrant, right quadrant, that type of thing. So, you know, employer, self-employed and the other side's business owner and investor. So, Mm -hmm. you know, for the majority of the time, you know, I was on the left-hand side. I had both feet on the left-hand side. And then over time, you know, as years went on, I started to, you know, put a toe into the right-hand side. And then I started to lean a little bit more Mm -hmm. into that kind of entrepreneurial side. And then, you know, I took my leave of absences. I started to have more of my weight into the the right hand side. And then two years ago, I, I lifted my foot out of the left hand side and now I'm full on right hand side. So I'm an investor, you know, business owner. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I, I tell people, so when I was in my job, it was, it was like I was flatlining and then I was like starting to decline, you know, my happiness levels, my fulfillment levels, my, my energy and the decline started to become more rapid. And, you know, uh, there are some exercises that I do regularly that help me see where I'm at on these levels. And, um, you know, when I took these leave of absences, you know, I, I, I found what I like to do. I just, I knew that I like to help people. And then I just explored in that realm. You know, I evolved from a real estate business coach into more of kind of like a, a life coach, a holistic living coach, knowing that, you know, all areas of your life are all kind of tied in. It's all life. It's not work life balance. It's, it's life. It's all tied together. You know, if you work, that's part of your life. So you got to make it all work. And right. Definitely. You know, if one area goes to shit, then, uh, <laughs> it, it drags down other areas. And that's what I was noticing in my life. For sure. And Brian, uh, I know you're, you're burning with some questions, but I have one more before my goldfish memory forgets it. You said <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> that you that you do some exercises that that kind of um, 
that, that kind of balance you and check you out like where you are right now. So what yeah. would be like uh, one or two of those exercises to kind of yeah. see where you're at? Yeah. Uh, two really powerful ones that I do and that are just like, like just super simple and it does not overly time consuming. One I did, uh, it was shared to me from ironically from a business coach of mine many, many years ago. And you've probably come across this in some of your growth as well. The, the life balance wheel. So basically it's a wheel. It's broken up into like a pie and mm -hmm. it's eight different areas of your life, you know, finances, profession, relationships, uh, personal growth, rest and relaxation, stuff like that. And then you just give yourself a ranking in each area from one to 10. And then you just shade it in and in a perfect world, yeah, you know, it's round, mm. right? And when I first did this, it was far from round. <laughs> you know, I, I did this probably 10 years ago for the first time. My finances were through the roof because I was working full time. We had real estate and my wife was working full time. So I, I did this regularly, this exercise. And I noticed that some of the areas were starting to be affected by the fact that I didn't like working anymore. And then it started dragging down some of the other areas of my life. So by me going to a job that I wasn't a fan of hmm. for the majority of my day, you know, like eight or nine hours a day, I'm here five days a week doing something I don't like. It started to affect my health. It started to affect my relationship with my wife. It started to affect the relationship with my kids because you bring that stuff home. So that's one exercise that it's, it's so powerful for me. And by doing it regularly and kind of comparing, it helps you shine the spotlight on where you need to start to focus your attention on. Yeah, definitely have to look into that one. And yeah. what's number two? So number two is called the well-being checklist. Mm -hmm. This one was shared with me uh, from a buddy of mine a couple of years ago. And basically you just write a list of things that you could do every day that bring you energy and that make you happy. So, uh, you know, I, I, and then it's basically a checklist Monday to Friday. You write out all these things, and I just have a template that I've created, so I just print it out um, every uh, every week. And then uh, as you do them, you know, you, you start checking them off. Yeah. Right so, uh, and there's a direct correlation with how I feel and how well I do on this list. Mm, no, for sure. It's it's we really underestimate, you know, what we do to our you know minds and bodies and. There's there's this great um, great journal. It's called the five minute journal. I've been looking into it, yeah. and it's just being like saying what you're thankful for, and yeah. it's got quotes for every day. But so I'm, I'm thinking about picking one of those up and just. It's awesome. Yeah. I have it. Um, awesome. Haven't started using it yet, but. <laughs> um, so we're all in the yeah. same boat there. Right. So uh, yeah, journaling is is on my well being checklist, and you know, reviewing goals and what you're grateful for, affirmations you know, laughing every day, mm. just, just, just similar things like that. Um, but yeah, that I tell you, like it, it's, it's gold. Like it's my energy levels over these last couple of years. Uh, you know, I know it's a combination of various lifestyle things, but having a list, like I'm all about, you know, just, just tracking and monitoring things. Mm. You know, if you want to get better at anything, you figure out a way to track it and then, you know, just monitor your progress. Very true. Yeah. Brian, Beautiful. I am passing the, the torch to you. All right. Goldfish shut down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I wanted to back up into earlier in the conversation where, uh, you know, you had were talking about being being able and willing to ask for help. And, and I know uh, many people, myself included, when I, oftentimes when I ask for help, I sometimes at least – maybe at a subconscious level, want other people to do things for me rather than to teach me how. I, I'm kind of curious as to uh, your view, your take on on exactly what asking for help is and, and again, maybe the best way that, that you've found to uh, ask for help. Yeah. So, uh, so this wasn't like an easy one for me when I kind of first started down this path. Like I always just thought that you know, there's these successful people out there and they're always busy, you know, with their thing because they're running their businesses and they're kind of doing their own thing. But what I found, you know, recently you know, over these last couple of years is that these 
successful people, and you know, I'm putting quotes around it because we have our own version of success. They they actually really enjoy helping people, and they don't mind being asked, as long as the person asking is is genuine and will do something about it. You know, you have to you have to don't just be like a sponge and just 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 take all the time, you know, figure out a way so it can be kind of like, like, like mutual and like you can kind of help each other. Definitely. As a person who has the knowledge, they actually get something from sharing their knowledge and helping someone down, you know, a different path. Like for me, you know, I have some people that reach out to me sometimes and it just feels good to help. So don't think if you're the person asking for help that you're not you don't have anything to give. And the thing that you have to give is to is to to just do something with the knowledge that that person is sharing with you. For yeah, sure. I, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I know when somebody comes to me for help and, and the, 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 the easiest way to, to drive me nuts is for me to give you the information and then you do nothing with it. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, yeah. You know, go, going into, um, you know, helping out, I, I know you've attended, a, I can't remember which one, uh, one of Tony Robbins' events, and I know you've also, I believe, gone back a, a, and, and been of service at, at, at another event, is that correct? Yeah, so that's, that's another big thing for me. So if, if you've gotten value out of something, uh, share it with other people and, and help that person who helped change your life. So I went to my first uh, Tony Robbins' event, it was Unleashed Your Power Within, uh, he doesn't come to Canada too often. Um, his last Unleash a Power Within event was, I think, probably at least five or six years ago. It was in Toronto. Uh, and yes, you do walk on hot coals. And <laughs> no, they didn't burn my feet. We did this at the base of the CN Tower. Um, and it was it was an amazing experience. So, you know, I attended that one. A couple years later, I attended another one in Chicago. And then a year later, I I volunteered to staff the next one in Chicago and it's it's such a rewarding experience to be able to now give back knowing that that event helped be a stepping stone to where you are in your current life to now help others step up to the next level in their life it, again it just it just feels good it's just you know, the whole paying pay it forward just give back and I'm really big into that absolutely now, now it, I'm curious of of the three events that you went to, which one do you think you got the most out of, grew the most from? Uh, it would be the first one. Okay. And a close second, the uh, the last one. Okay. Where I helped out. Uh, it's kind of, kind of what I figured. I, I think you know when when you first get new knowledge, there's a huge uh, learning curve bump, and then yeah, again when when we give back to others, yeah. Uh, there's another huge, huge learning bump. So yeah, totally. That's awesome. So, um, so what are you doing? You know, the nowadays, Mike. The what are you doing uh, this summer or or yeah. probably even this week? Yeah. So, I have a couple of things on the go. So as I said, uh, I'm a success coach. So you know, I kind of help people figure out what it is they want to do, and then I help them achieve it. So, you know, I. You know, I promote those things and I have calls with people and, you know, I have a couple scheduled this week. Um, another thing that I'm really excited about is I have a, a retreat actually coming up this summer. You know, we can talk a little bit more about it later. But, um, you know, there's and I'm sure you guys can relate. You know, you have ideas, you know, years ago and you plant these there's these seeds that are planted. Right. Like. I knew that I, I'm very passionate about education and helping people, and I feel that everyone should have, uh, you know, equal access to uh, quality uh, education. And uh, you know, I wanted to build a, I wanted to build schools in other countries, and um, I was just overwhelmed by the thought. I had no idea how to do something like that. So you know, I, I planted the seed years ago, and as time went on, kind of the path started to become a little more clear. Long story short, you know, I'm I've raised sixty five hundred so far of the ten thousand dollars to build a school in Ecuador. So that'll wow. be the first school. So and then the other thing is is I always knew that I wanted to do like retreats, 
right? So I was always thinking, okay, I'm going to do a retreat in another country. And I'm like, well, why don't I do one local first? You know, it's beautiful. Ontario is awesome. There's tons of places to do it around here. So that's what I'm doing. I planted the seed years ago, and now I'm making it happen this year. You know, the pieces are have come together. I've, I've booked the, you know, the, the center to do it in, and I'm really excited about that. So uh, this week, I'm, I'm looking to continue to spread word on that. And, you know, my average day, um, yeah, just, I have a lot more self-care than I used to, kind of looking after myself, you know, and, and I can... You know, manscaping, we can, we can really relate <laughs> on that, you know, um, looking after ourselves. Um, and I'm in transition mode right now. As I said, I'm a real estate investor. Um, I've wanted to make more of an impact over the last year or two, but something has been holding me back. And it's my my real estate involvement. So I have a portfolio of houses where we rent. Um, and it's a distraction to me that I've noticed. Um, a little task come up that I have to take care of. So this is the year where I'm starting to outsource more. You know, I'm outsourcing my website development. I'm outsourcing my bookkeeping. I'm outsourcing uh, leasing service for my rentals, more of my property management. And I'm doing this all in an effort to free up more of my time so I can spend more of my time doing more of what I like to do, which is coaching, helping people, organizing retreats, things like that. And having fun. <laughs> oh, having fun is important. Yeah. Now, you just said coaching people. So I'm wondering, what's your uh, what's your average client look like? And kind of like, what do you what do you do with people? I mean, like every case is obviously different, but like, what yeah. do people usually come to you for? And and how do you how do you help them? Yeah. So so people usually find me because they um, th- they gravitate to me because they they see the path and the journey that I've gone on. And they like the idea of it and they want something similar. So a lot of the people that work with me are people that are, are unhappy, they're unfulfilled, they're, they're doing something that they don't like to do and they're looking for help to switch that up. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of the people are lost. Some, a lot of them know that they don't want to work in their jobs anymore, but most don't really know what they want to do. So you know, I help them explore stuff. And that's why I'm, you know, I'm really excited about that retreat because, you know, it's, it's not just asking the questions. It's about asking the right questions and then giving yourself the time and the space to answer them. I I got the most value of some of my personal growth is actually by my coaches and mentors creating a space for me to answer these questions. So like, you know, in nature and quiet and solitude, um, things like that. Hmm. Yeah. Right on. So let's say I, I come to you for um, business advice, right? Like how how does one kind of um, connect with you and, and what does it look like? How, like? how do you work with people like over weeks? Do you meet with them like daily? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like- so so I, I'm all about accountability and taking action and getting clear. Perfect. So initially um, we have – uh, a lengthy consult. So if we're local, we meet in person. Um, and if it's nice out, we'll go meet outside and just chat outside and just figure out what it is that you want to do. And we get clear on what that is. So we'll spend probably three or four hours just uh, exploring, um, giving me an idea of what's important to you, your values, because that drives everything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we figure out what your why is like everybody, you know, they, they have things that they want. And then it, you just drill down, you know, just the, the power of why, you know, just keep asking that question. And, you know, the more compelling your why, the more likely you are to achieve those goals. So after that, then, you know, we, we create some short term goals for them. So there'll be um, yearly goals, create what they want to achieve in the next year. Mm-hmm. And then we break it down into the next 90 days. And then, there's uh, we create some accountability. So once a, once a week, um, you know they're going to send over their uh, weekly email. Um, they're going to you know let me know of the tasks that they're planning on doing in the week, and I'll look at those and make sure that they're in line with the goals that they said that they're going to do. And then we talk once a week as well. Awesome. To, uh, go over any challenges, 
we celebrate successes, uh, things like that. That's cool. And now I, I just have um, one more question on, on that front. What's been kind of your most satisfying experience working with a client or in this field in general? Yeah. Uh, I really enjoy bringing people together. You know, I, 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 I have, I create mastermind groups as well. So I have like group coaching as well. So uh, I like collaborating with people and I like creating experiences, you know, um, cause I, I find that they're, they're more memorable mm -hmm. and my own personal experience, I get more out of it than, you know, just, just like just phone calls and stuff. Like I like, I like in-person stuff where possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like, like, let's say like one of your major successes or like your client successes that's made you feel like, holy crap, like I did that or like I helped to achieve that, like yeah, without getting too, you know, yeah. in the weeds. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I've had a couple people with uh, similar stories, but uh, yeah, it's just helping the person realize that uh, help them figure out what they want to do. So, you know, one person, you know, was kind of working full time in their job and, you know, conveniently they had an interest in real estate as well. And, you know, they kind of started in on, you know, becoming a real estate agent, but it was tough for them to um, step away for their job. You know, they had reasons that were kind of keeping them there. And, you know, I just, I shared my experiences with them and some of the things that, you know, I went through and, you know, it's not like they quit right away. They mm -hmm. kind of went through some discovery on their own, but it was amazing because, you know, I talked about the life balance exercise. This is one thing that I get them to do, you know, right at the beginning of our coaching program, because I want to see some progress in this respect. So it's, it's interesting to see the major shifts that some of these people have had in as little as three to three to four months. And, you know, they, their life balance wheel, they had like ones and twos and, you know, in some areas they had like eights and nines, but, then in just a couple months, it's awesome to see that, you know, some, sometimes people, they, 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 they're out of their jobs and now they're into doing something that they enjoy doing more. And it's awesome to see how, you know, the life areas start to kind of even themselves out. And that's what, like, see that, like fulfillment is, is very important to me. And that's mm -hmm. what I was lacking in my, my job. It was just, I got to a point where I'm like, why did why did I come into work today? Like I, d I didn't get anything out of this and I, I wasn't a fan of that anymore. I didn't want to settle with that anymore. So doing what I'm doing now, like I get more fulfillment. You know, I just, I I'm all about progress and seeing change and I work for the government and there, that, that didn't happen <laughs> in a, in a, in a fast, a fast enough time frame. Things go slow. Or at least they did in my office. Yeah, and, and the government's <laughs> not known for, you know, progression <laughs> or speed. And no offense to anyone who works no, there, but I know. it's exactly it's, it's a it's a lot of red tape and just kind of like useless bureaucracy. Yeah. But yeah, no, no, great answer. That fulfillment. That that's the same reason I do what I do because like helping people, I just love it, man. It's like something you just you, you can't you know get enough of pretty yeah, much. And knowing that you help that person down a, a more happy path it's mm -hmm. just knowing that that person's life is better off because of a conversation they had with you that's what makes this worthwhile to me definitely definitely yeah so i, I know uh i want to say recently but but maybe not quite so recently you you got uh your personal training certification and and have you uh, done anything with that as far as working with clients or did you just kind of get that for your own base of knowledge and, and what does your, your exercise uh, program look like? Yeah. So CanFit Pro, I almost have my full certification. I just have to do the practical exam okay. and then I'm certified. Um, I didn't get that to, you know, just like, like become a personal trainer in a gym. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I got it more for self-knowledge and knowledge that I can share with others. Beautiful. Um, yeah, it's it's great. And even that the Czech Institute that we, we were we were all part of, like that that was great. And that book, the the people that I met there, it's awesome. Like I, I really get a good energy hanging around people that are into looking after themselves and helping people. You know, uh, I just 
even the the expo that they do you know once a year in Toronto you guys have probably been to it oh the canfit pro yeah and, it's just yeah. man these people like i just i love being around them and i just love that energy um so so my workout regimen um i usually four or five days a week i'm at my fitness club and i alternate uh between yoga trx um maybe some high intensity interval training and sometimes I, I just hit up the gym and just like lift weights. Um, I love the variety. Like I'm getting, I'm getting so much more results now than I did years ago. And I used to work out at the gym probably five days a week and I was there longer, but I didn't have any variety. It was the same stuff all the time. So, you know, what I'm learning is that, you know, variety is awesome and your body loves variety. And I like it because it, keeps it interesting as well you know you got to find something that you like to do because then you're more likely to do it um i i i love soccer that was my sport growing up and i kept saying that you know i want to get back into it well, this was the first year that I, I jumped back into it so i joined i joined a league you know the age ranges were probably from 20 to like on other teams like probably 50 I was probably the oldest on my team. I'm, I turned 40 in a couple of weeks and it, it made me feel really good because I was one of the fittest dudes on the team and I'm, I'm the oldest dude. Like I right. like being able to keep up with, you know, these young guys. It's uh, and I have kids too. So I like to be able to keep up with them too. So again, you know, I, I, I talked about your why earlier, you know, your why is, is one of the most important things. So if anybody listening to this call gets anything out of my talk, just, tap into your why you know if you have goals ask yourself why or have someone ask you why is this goal so important to you and then have them ask you again well why is that important to you and then eventually it gets down to the root of why it is you're actually doing it so this lifestyle stuff all of these things i, I do this and i share it because I, I like to inspire others to lead a healthy lifestyle because it's it's had a positive impact on my life um and it's not just, you know, my, my friends, it's my family. I want my family to see and my kids. I have a six year old and a nine year old daughter. Like I, I want them to see that this is, this is kind of like a normal day to day stuff. And you know, that's, that's why I do it. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah that's setting an example, I think is, is so important. You know, you, yeah. you have to live and show your values because I yeah. mean, if, if you're not setting a good example for your kids, MTV and whatever else is well probably kids don't even watch MTV nowadays <laughs> that's how old I am uh, <laughs> well whatever like Instagram you know they're yeah. teaching your kids how to do this or do that but you have to be the one that's like holy crap my dad can you know outrun me my dad can you yeah. know outrun that my, my soccer coach or whoever right but like yeah. it's it's amazing now yeah. I, I do remember there was one point I don't know if you're still going through with this uh, Leonidas from 300 tra Transformation Challenge. Um, yeah. Are, yeah. are you still uh, still going to don the red cape and the uh, the leather underwear? <laughs> I don't know if I'll go that far, but that <laughs> that was uh, you know I I I like that physique. Mm -hmm. So you know I'm all about goal setting and visualizing and making it real. So yeah, I just I found a body that. I would like to look like, and I found a picture of it and, uh, I cut it out and I put it on my vision board and among a bunch of other things, but health and wellness is important to me. And, you know, when you're doing goal setting, you have to be specific, right? Oh, yeah. you know, whether it's weight, you know, whether it's your strength, you got to figure out a way to measure that. So, you know, that, that picture helps me measure it. And, you know, every couple months, you know, probably every quarter or something, I, I'm taking my measurements, I'm snapping pictures, and I'm all about progress. You know, am I getting closer to this? If not, why? Mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'm busy in business building or whatever it is, because it happens, right? You're going to have these ups and downs and, you know, but you, you can't, you can't stay in that space for too long. Otherwise, sure. you're going to be redlining. And then you, you fail in your life balance wheel, right? Exactly. So and that's what I tell people. Like, if you've got ones or twos, okay, as long as you have a good reason. But if you stay there too long, it's just like a car. You know, what happens when you're in the red for too long? You know, you burn out, you break down. 
and you know you you eventually get shipped off to the scrapyard <laughs> uh, you don't it's same with your life you know if you ignore your health for too long if you ignore your you know your relationship with your wife for too long it all comes it could all come tumbling down right and you know that was that was a savior for me because you know when my first daughter was born you know this isn't something that you know I, I'm, I'm proud of but it kind of helped me get to where I am today I was busy I was busy working full time I was busy building businesses and I was really focused on money in the future back then and my big shift was I've now switched that to living in the now and focusing on experiences and not money. So I sacrificed mm. probably the first year, year and a half of my first daughter's life just building all this stuff. And had I not been doing these exercises, I probably would have still been just chasing the money saying, oh, this is all for the future. It's all for us. Yeah. But had I continued down that path, I, I, I would be... I'd be a, a rich, well, probably not rich because I'd have to split everything, but I, I, <laughs> it could have led to divorce. I, it would have led me to not even being around my kids. So that's kind of, you know, you have to make sacrifices to kind of get to where you are. And, you know, I sacrificed early on and I, I'm just glad that I woke up. Otherwise, you know, I probably wouldn't be on this call right now. <laughs> See, I think now you're more successful than when you were, you know, when you're working for the government or whatever, like making piles of cash, yeah. um, because it's 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 how we you, how we judge success, right? It's not the millions you have in the bank; it's yeah. what you do with your money and how how you enjoy your life. But yeah, yeah. And, and trying to explain that to people because the majority of people are of the mindset that money equals success. And when I was explaining it to people, I'm like, I'm not happy. It's I'm unfulfilled. Uh, you know, I. I just, I'm not growing here anymore. And then they're like, well, it's okay. Just hang on. You're making good money. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but, and then they're like, but you're making good money. And I'm like, okay, oh, we're done yeah. here. Yeah. Right? Until yeah. I found my network of people that understood this. And that's when things started to really take off for me. Awesome. Absolutely. Now it, we've kind of touched on, on uh, an, an idea that, uh, that I got from Ty Lopez is that, um, you know, to, to live the good life is to have health, wealth, happiness, slash fulfillment. And then the last one would be love. And I think we've touched on, on the first three. Uh, I, I'd be kind of curious to, to know about your, uh, not necessarily your love life, but you know, your, your, your family, <laughs> family life, which, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, obviously I, I would hope where, where your love lies. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I am married. Um, and I have two daughters. So uh, some of my biggest challenges throughout this whole growth has been with my wife. You know, she didn't overly understand what I was, it, while I was working, it was easy because the money was kind of rolling in and, you know, she was more open to allowing me to like buying houses and things like that. And she helped here or there. Um, but when it was suggested that, you know, I, I try different things and we had, we had lots of conflict, lots of fights, lots of, um, cause I've done a lot of personal growth work. I've spent a lot of money. I've spent a lot of time elsewhere, you know, going to different countries, um, up till two in the morning, you know, you know, just, it wasn't a good marriage at some points. And, you know, my reasoning was, but I'm doing this for the family. Right. Mm. And the big realization for me was, the things that I was doing this for, I was actually moving further away from. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I'm spending all this time trying to build all this stuff, but to get what? To get something I already had. Like I already had a good wife. I already have awesome kids. So it, it really comes down to uh, like a balance of this stuff. Um, you know, like, as I said, if, if I just ignored it, for, like I'm not regretting what I did because had I not done that, I'd probably still be working right now. And my wife has quit her job as well. She quit before me. She would be working as well, too. So mm. that sacrifice then allowed us to do what we're doing now. But had I continued down that path, everything would not be pleasant right now. So, yes, um, we still have you know, disagreements from, from time to time, but things are a lot better than they used to be. And, you know, I didn't. There were parts of it where I didn't feel supported and I didn't feel understood and I didn't feel as though she believed in me. 
mm. which is tough when you're you're going on this journey. And I talked about loneliness, right? Like I didn't, you know, I, I, there were times I just didn't feel like I had a partner that supported me. And that's, that's, that's just how that's I hard. feel. But now, now we're on board, like we're, we're much more supportive of each other and we help each other more. Mm. So that's kind of where it's at with that. And being a dad, um, like I know, Brian, you just, you have a, a, a recent newborn, which mm-hmm. is awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And they're, my kids are a big part of my why. You know, I, 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 can, I can go make a million bucks. I have the knowledge to go make a million bucks. But I, I don't want to right now. I want to see my kids grow up. You know, I want to I want to help in their development. You know, they're they're this age only once. You know, I can come back to making money whenever I want. So mm-hmm. that's kind of where I'm at with my kids. Like I, I spend a lot of time with my kids. I'm a soccer coach. I go to basketball tournaments. Like I'm around a lot. So I'm I'm very fortunate and proud of the decisions that I've made that have allowed us to do what we're doing now. Right on, right on. That's, I mean, so many people don't ever kind of like wake up, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like your family's right there and like time is not infinite, right? Like, yeah. like you got to live in the now or else it just, yeah. yeah. There are responsibilities for sure, but that people yeah. take it too far. Yeah, and especially, you know, our, our culture here, it's just work, 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 make more money, be super busy. But it doesn't have to be that complicated. Like I've, I've done a lot of, traveling and you kind of look around and some of the places I go they don't they don't have like a crap load of money but they're happy Mm -hmm. and they hang around each other and they're not on their phone all the time and I was in Ecuador a couple years ago and it was amazing to see just like multi-generations you know the, the 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 grandson and the parents and the grandparents they all just go to a park and they have a soccer ball and a frisbee you know and and they're not on their phones all the time and that's cool. Like that's free. That doesn't cost anything. And you're outside instead here. Everyone's just always so busy and just making the money. And, you know, I just, like you mentioned earlier, I like just wake up. Like that's, yep. that's part of my, my, my mission is just to give people, you know, a, a shake and <laughs> help them get their, their head out of the sand and show them it does, you know, what are you working towards? <laughs> It's it's a very good point, and if you ask that question to to a lot of people, they'll either give you a very vague answer or they'll, they'll be speechless. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Brian, um, any more questions? Uh, not at the moment. No? Okay, I will I will uh, continue then on my on my rampage of questions. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Mike. I know you're a pretty pretty public figure, at least on on Facebook. You know, you post a lot of a lot of stuff. I'm kind of the same way. But what's one thing that most people don't know about you? Uh huh. And, and it could be that you, like as simple as that you shave your legs. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a good one. All right, you know what? We can we can you can ruminate yeah. on that. Yeah. But let me let me go to the next one here. Now, yeah. who are kind of the your top three people who who inspire you or who have inspired you? Like, if you had a, like a dream team of like just awesome people to always hang around, yeah. who would who would the three people that you choose be? Yeah. So, Robin Sharma, he's a mentor of mine. I've seen him speak in person once, but I've read. The majority of his books, he has a blog, he does you know, video posts on YouTube and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, he's very inspirational to me. You know, I kind of, I enjoy his message and his style of teaching. So Robin Sharma would be one. Um, uh, Tony Robbins, he's definitely uh, another. You know, mm-hmm. He's been in this personal growth space for years and you know he's helped thousands and probably millions and millions of people and you know, he, he does the basket brigades where, you know, he helps feed people over Thanksgiving. And, you know, I've started to do that as well. So I'm very inspired by what he does and his trainings as well. Um, then there's a, an, another coach and mentor of mine. His name is Philip McKernan. He's actually out in BC. Mm. And I've done some work with him. You know, I've done some mastermind groups with some people that he's set up. 
And I've also gone on some experiences that he's created, and it's inspired me to do some as well. So um, this was a, kind of a give and grow uh, adventure we did in Guatemala, where cool. we, we volunteered at some orphanages, and then uh, and then we did had some fun and adventure. We climbed a mountain, and then throughout we had some personal growth. So that was very um, life changing for me because that's and I talked about planting seeds. So seeds were planted then, and you know I've been watering them over the years because that's something that interests me. You know I really want to build schools in other countries. So he's my third, and if I had to throw in a fourth, uh, Eric Thomas, was a hip hop preacher. This guy just uh, mm. he just has a way of his energy is just unbelievable, and I've I've seen him speak once in person, and he uh, he has an amazing energy, and his YouTube videos are just great. That's that's pretty cool, Eric Thomas. Yeah, I've I've got to I've got to check him out. He's really cool. Yeah, his one his one big line is you know, if you, you you need to want to you want success as, as much as you need to breathe. Like I, he had this one really really cool video. Like it like all of his videos are awesome, but mm. you gravitate to certain speakers or books or whatever, and and his style matches with me. It resonates. Yeah, I like it a lot. That's that's really cool, man. Yeah, it, it's it's good to have people that kind of like, not just like role models, but like people who inspire you. You know, people are doing things that you're either doing at a higher level or just, yeah. you know, just like, oh man, I wish I could do that. And the truth is, we can do that. You know, exactly. Yeah. And that's it. You gotta you gotta find people who are living the way that you know you're interested in living. You know, everybody has their own versions of success. So. Again, just tap in your why. Like, why? Why is living that in that, that way important to you? So, you no, know, I've I found a couple people that are doing it, and it's just modeling. And this is what mm-hmm. I learned from Tony Robbins: just find people who are doing what you what you're doing, and ask them how they did it, or figure out how they did it. You yeah. know, you may not have access to them. Like, I can't just call Robin Sharma and say, "Hey, what's up? You know, how did you do this?" Um, you just he's got his books. You know, he he's got his videos. You just kind of learn through them. And that's what I'm, you know, and that's what you guys are doing as well. You guys are sharing your message and, you know, people either gravitate to it or they gravitate away from it. Yep. So it just makes your, 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 your bubble of people that much stronger. Yeah. Some people just aren't ready for change or this certain type of change, you know, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Now, um, I'm wondering, since you've had a bit of time, subconscious time to, to ruminate, <laughs> Have, did you come up with one thing most people don't know about you? No, I'll have to get oh. back to you on that. All right, yeah, you know what? We can put it in the show notes. Or yeah, you know, it's we'll... a great question, and uh, I like it. Yeah, it, it's... I, I, nothing comes to mind right now. Yeah, because like, I mean, if somebody asked me, I'd, I'd be able to tell ten different things. Like, yeah, I, I currently have books on my bedroom floor. Like, yeah. it's it's like I've run out of bookshelf space, so yeah. I just. I just keep them stacked everywhere now. Um, yeah. It's not good, but it's also not bad. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, Brian, um, I think we're, we're about to wrap up, and Brian's got some good wrap-up questions for you. So, cool. Absolutely. So uh, the first one is going to be, who would you want to hear on the Optimum Human podcast, and, and what would you want to ask them or, or hear them talk about? Yeah. So I, I'm really big into balance. And, you know, whenever I, I meet up with some, some, some people, you know, who, like their speakers or whatnot, and this is kind of a question that I ask them is, you know, how, how do you live a life in balance? And you know, some of them don't have like a balanced life right now. And some of them do. And some of them don't even like get it. It's just kind of all business to them. And that's cool. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I would like to hear how, you know, like, like a Robin Sharma would balance his life. Um, because I'm interested in spreading my message globally, but how does that look like, you know, like, like I'm married, I have kids, like how, how do you kind of put it all together? You know, I know he has kids uh, as well. So, uh, those are, those, that's a, uh, an interesting question that I'm, I, I would definitely tune in to, to listen to. Okay, perfect. And. Yeah, I, you may have just answered it in, in that answer, but uh, uh, I'll give you two ways to answer this. Either um, 
what how would you define the optimum human or could you give us thing uh, you know the, the first person that comes to mind when when you hear the optimum human yeah so um yeah, it, it definitely ties into similar stuff as what I just talked about, like balance. So the, the optimum human is someone that is happy, they have fun, they laugh, they have connection with people and with themselves. Um, they're, they're, they're healthy, they look after themselves. Um, and one thing I mean, we didn't talk a lot about is, is they give, we talked some of it, but uh, they, they give back, they share what you know their knowledge they share their resources whether it's time or money and you know they they help make this world better and uh, people are uh, who are in contact with this person have better lives because of their connection with this person awesome beautiful um a couple more um what is the one non-negotiable life habit that, that you never compromise on? Yeah, so it would have to be um, eating right and you know, along with that is, is just like moving daily. So I found that, you know, just the, the more and more that I do that, like even yesterday was like kind of like a, I had some stuff on the go and, you know, I usually do like like these morning sprints you know, every second day, and you know, I was due yesterday, but I didn't I didn't do it in the morning, so I just I just did it. It only took me like twenty minutes, like just before dinner type of thing. So yeah, just like eating eating right, eating healthy, eating clean foods, and you know not eating the crap. And again, it's about balance. So it's I'm not saying just don't indulge ever. I'm saying the majority of the time, eat foods that bring you energy instead of take energy away because that taps into so many other areas of your life. Now for, for some people that are listening, they may not have the kind of same background that we do. Like they, they may not be holistic lifestyle coaches. So yeah. could you give a, a couple examples of, you know, foods that take energy away and then well, the counter to that foods yeah. that, that give energy? Yeah. So I know you guys all know this stuff, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so processed foods, you know, sugars, um, salts, um, anything in packages. So the more natural it is and the less ingredients it has, uh, chances are the, the better it is for you. So, you know, you, you hang around the perimeter of grocery stores, try to get to your local markets. Um, if you can't pronounce things that are on the, the label, chances are it's probably not great for your body. So if you're confused by how to pronounce it, your body is just as confused uh, by on what to do with that when it's in your body. So it it takes energy because your body's trying to figure out what it is you just ate and doesn't know what to do with it. So that takes energy. Whereas if you're eating something that has is close to alive, you know, like if you're buying foods from your local farmer's market, mm -hmm. you know, it chances are it's been picked recently. And the more energy it has and the more alive it is, the more alive you're going to feel and the more energy you're going to have. So I've, I've really adopted that over the last couple of years. And, you know, I still have a ton to learn, but I've definitely come a long way and my energy levels are, are great because of it. Awesome. Great answer. Beautiful. Now, I know earlier on uh, you had mentioned about uh, your retreat. Um, Wanted to know how can our listeners find out more about you and, and exactly what's going to uh, happen or, or what tell us more about the retreat this summer. Yeah, so uh, this is a, a retreat where I'm going to bring together uh, a group of people and, you know, I'm, I've created an environment for people to be able to have some space to be able to answer some of these, these really good questions. So as I said, from my experience, when you know, I get these questions and I get better answers if I'm in nature, if I'm surrounded by better people, if there's no noise around uh, versus, you know, sitting in a Starbucks trying to answer life changing questions. So, you know, I've been part of many of these experiences in the past and uh, I know the things that help get the most, you know, uh, um, 
the results and help people get the most direction with people. So I'm incorporating into this and I'm, I'm, it's not just sit in a room and I ask questions. It's, there's a lot of, you know, there's solo time, there's group time, there's, you know, getting out in nature and reflecting and walks. And, you know, this, this is, you know, not in a busy space. This is actually, you know, there's cabins and we're surrounded by, you know, 150 acres of trees and, lots of cool stuff to do. I'm, I'm really big into outdoors and nature and because, um, you know, it, it definitely gives me energy to be there. And so that's, that's what I've created. So it's, uh, it's two and a half days, uh, two nights, you know, everything uh, included like healthy foods, um, just amazing people. So, you know, it's all about connection with yourself and just meeting other cool people and just, I'll be sharing a lot of things uh, that I do, you know, just my healthy lifestyle choices. And we're actually going to be practicing that for the, for the weekend. So the big thing is uh, just disconnect to reconnect. So as I said earlier, like we're we're all so busy with all of the stuff that we've created and now it's time to realize what, what's important in your life and, you know, why do you want it? And, actually getting clear as to why it is you want it and just creating more of the stuff that you enjoy doing and having more fun. Beautiful. Now, is there going to be a fire walk there? Ah, <laughs> uh, we'll have to see. Uh, all right. You got, got to show up to find out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that it's in June, it's uh, June 24th to 26th. Um, I'm just working on getting the details uh, online. Um, I have a website. It's called, uh, happy, healthy, and wise dot me. And it's just in the process of being transitioned over to Mike Gillespie dot com. All right. Perfect. And we'll, we'll, we'll put, put that, that in the show, show notes. notes. Cool. Jinx, you owe me a uh, <laughs> chicken yarn. S- something healthy. A green <laughs> I was going to say Coke, but yeah, a right. Green smoothie. <laughs> awesome. And, and Mike, will you be uh, collaborating with anybody on, on that uh, retreat or will you be the, the solo host? Uh, I'm going to be the solo host. I'm going to be bringing some people in to um, uh, help with the experience, though. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. If if you need anybody from the uh, from the fitness field, you know, I might be free that weekend. Cool. <laughs> Appreciate it. Little little self plug here, but yeah. Um, yeah. But but yeah, is is there um, anywhere? else people can find you like is facebook an appropriate place to connect with you like facebook would be a great place yeah so i mean i can give you the link to my profile and you can attach it in the show notes but yeah facebook is the place where i share uh, a lot of things that's going on you know just things that help people live better Mm -hmm. things that i've applied in my life that have helped me switch up things in my life at least like i was i was the busy dude like i was just go 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 focus on the future money and now you know i'm on the flip side like i'm just this chill dude you know I, i'm relaxed um you know i i take some time for myself and i just share things that have helped me in hopes that you know there are others out there that are experiencing similar challenges and you know if, if they've applied any of these things and it's helped them feel better and live better then that makes me feel good. That's where I get my fulfillment from. Awesome. And I, yeah, I love the stuff that you post some days. It's like, uh, it's, it's motivating, funny, good mix of good. Yeah. Mix that's of what I try things. to do. You know, I try to give a little bit of everything cause you know, we got to, we got to laugh, you know, I put some, some fun stuff on there and we don't, we don't laugh enough. Laughing just feels good. Right. Oh yeah. We need so, it. I know. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm, I'm all about just giving people that shake and just, just like you guys, just, just trying to help people wake up and just show them that life doesn't have to be challenging. And, you know, here's kind of a way to make it a little bit easier. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And I could, I could talk about self shaking, but that sounds inappropriate. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get, we'll get away Save from that. that topic. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Brian just hit a disc record or whatever. Yeah, I, we're going to yeah. stop recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're just going to cut it off. But um, anyway, thank you, Mike, for, for coming on, man. We we really appreciate it. Brian, I assume there's there's no more? That That right. is it. It's yeah. uh, It's been been a great uh, great hour, man. I learned, learned a lot myself, and, and I'm sure our listeners did as well. 
that's cool. I appreciate the invite, guys. Yeah, we appreciate you coming on and you know just uh, being yourself, which is which is awesome. Yeah. Thank cool. you, Mike, and uh, everybody who's listening, check out Mike's Facebook. He's got a couple of pages and then a group that he runs. So awesome! It's 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 fun. Everybody's very nice in that community. I don't think I've seen like one negative thing posted. So uh, he's definitely surrounded himself with some great people. So absolutely. Cool. Awesome guys. Thanks. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. And we'll uh, we'll talk to you later. Yeah. Cool. Thanks you. so much, Mike. Okay. See you guys. Bye. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Optimum Human Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to head on over to iTunes and give a five-star rating and review, which will help spread the word to more awesome listeners just like you. Head on over to TheOptimumHuman.com and subscribe to the free newsletter and get The Optimum Human's Blueprint to the Optimum Life. Download it instantly. Thanks for listening.